Well, it is Sunday morning. It is Capital Region Sunday. I am Richie Phillips, here with two very special guests. We have Mr. Robert Nevins, who's the founder and director of the Veterans Program. It's the Saratoga Warhorse Foundation. And Kathy Pelham, the ED. I assume that stands for executive director. Right. Executive director is uh, what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> nice to have you both aboard here this morning. Good Thank morning, you. Richie. Thank you. And the Saratoga Warhorse, what is that? Let's start from scratch here for people that have never heard of it. Well, Saratoga Warhorse is a confidential peer-to-peer uh, program that uh, uses uh, off-the-track thoroughbreds and in a unique way to create a unique bond, a uh, special bond that can be can have an emotional impact on veterans that uh, is uh, life-changing. And we do that right here in Saratoga and at our facility in uh, Aiken, South Carolina. And you're the person who actually founded this? Uh, yeah, a few years back, uh, probably 2011, I retired from my uh, airline job to uh, do this full-time. I, at that time, I had no idea how successful it was going to be, but uh, it's moving right along now. It's interesting because I know they do this a lot with children. They use horses with children's programs. Is that where you kind of got the idea for adults? No, actually, the way I put it together, uh, uh, this technique was developed actually for horse people to help them uh, treat their horses a little better through training. And I went through this experience myself and found it very powerful and then connected it to the veterans so we're doing something a little different here, but uh, I would say a lot more powerful emotionally. And I'll ask uh, Kathy, since you're on the line over there, waiting desperately to talk. <laughs> um, how big is this problem of uh, veterans having not only physical disabilities coming back from, from battle, but also psychological disabilities? Well, Richie, it's, it's significant. Uh, every day we get word of uh, a veteran that has not been able to make the adjustments regardless of many organizations and people's best efforts to help. Uh, about 22 veterans are committing suicide every day. So as we're having this conversation, we're embarking very closely on a time when a veteran is going to not feel like they can put their next foot forward, and uh, that's where we want to intervene. The interesting thing to me about Saratoga Warhorse, and I've only been here a few months, is that there is no riding. And a lot of those other programs, uh, such as you were referring to, involve right. actually riding the horse and or grooming. And that is not part of the three-day program at Saratoga Warhorse. It really is a silent bond that's formed. And um, Take us through that. How does that work within the three well, days? I think Bob has the, the best firsthand knowledge of that and the longer experience. Well, it, it, it's almost a little hard to describe. Uh, the veterans, uh, when they've had the experience, we call it an experience, when they've been through the program, they say they can't explain what's happened to them. But really what we're doing is we're teaching the veteran how to communicate with the horse in the horse's own language. And man, by nature, is a predator. Horses, by nature, are flight animals. Hmm. So it's a completely different language than like the language with dogs, which are predators also. So when we can teach a human to communicate silently and through body language with a horse, that horse by instinct wants to bond with them for their own survival. And that connection when it happens with a human can be very, very powerful. And it's even more powerful from the veteran perspective because they're coming into this emotionally disconnected to begin with, and that's part of what's driving this whole suicide issue. So we've kind of found a technique, but it's also, like say, a very emotional uh, connection when it takes place. It's so funny because I've always heard the theory that the horses are probably the dumbest animals ever, and we've gone from that to them being the most valuable animals. It's ma- amazing. Yeah. You know, uh, we, uh, uh, who would have known that the horse could be the catalyst and the vehicle for change in somebody's life, especially the life of a veteran? You know, horses have been around for a long time. Unfortunately, we lost like 8 million of them in World War I, so we've been utilizing them in the wrong capacity. Right. Now, here they are turning around saving the lives of veterans. Richie, these aren't just any horses, and I think it's worth your listening audience just kind of understanding this. These are retired thoroughbred racehorses. Yeah, I did not know that. I didn't realize it. 
so they've been very disciplined. They've led a structured life. Right. They've had to um, push through difficulties and challenges. And so there seem to be some emotional similarities between the, thor- the retired thoroughbred racehorse and our soldiers. You know, it's unexplainable, but there seems to be something going on there that's bigger than easily visible. It's fascinating. Now, we, of course, we have to talk about money. How do you get your financial support for a program like this? Well, we're very, very fortunate. The thoroughbred racing community was it has been incredibly supportive financially and by reaching out to others. Uh, in the local community, not only is the, the horse community um, supportive, but we have local organizations, local businesses, and individuals who contribute to the organization and make it possible for us to bring veterans from anywhere in the country to one of our two locations at no charge to them. No charge Uh, to them at all? No. Wow. So how do veterans find out about this program besides listening to this program? Where else can they go? Well, I would would say what we find here is the peer-to-peer connection, graduates who have been through this program, and since its inception here, we're, we're looking at close to 400 graduates now, and they're telling their friends at 2 o'clock in the morning when they call each other out of desperation, you know, like, right. yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do, I can't take this anymore, sure. and the veteran will say, you got to call Saratoga Warhorse. I've been there. It changed my life. I know it'll help you. And so when a veteran calls and they establish that bond with me as a fellow veteran, we we get right to the point, and they're usually willing to admit that they really could use the help, and, and then we just take it from there and make it happen. Maybe in the beginning, would a veteran say to you, I, I don't understand how a horse is going to help me through this? Well, that's funny, Richie, because, you know, having done this so many times, I can tell you exactly what a veteran is going to say Mm -hmm. before, after, and during. And one of the questions they do say after they've had the experience was, what's a horse going to do for me? Right. But, But the change is so dramatic that that's why they're out telling their friends, and that's, uh, that's helpful to perpetuate the program. Now, how can the public, Kathy, can they donate to this program? Absolutely. Yeah. The more the merrier. Um, we need as many financial supporters as we can gather, sure. and uh, they can do that either through our website at www.saratogawarhorse.com. We're on Facebook, and if anyone is shopping on Amazon, Amazon Smile carries the Saratoga Warhorse option for a charitable gift. Oh, well, that's great. What I'm going to do is put up a blog that has all these links on it as well. Awesome. Which Thank connects you. to our Facebook on uh, Town Square Media as well. Um, you know, looking at your website, there's some fascinating things on there. There's a couple of videos that are just amazing. There's one that's like a 22-minute documentary on there. Can you explain that a little bit? You were involved in that, Robert. It's, it's about you, right? <laughs> yeah. When uh, people start hearing about us uh, through the media, we were contacted. And they made a documentary about War Horse, mm-hmm. which actually won awards for the producers of, of that documentary. But uh, it really helps get the message out there because it is difficult to explain in a conversation. Yeah, so you really have to see, see it. the videos, yep. it really helps, and the veterans can relate to what they're seeing there, and especially when they hear the other veterans talking about their experience. And that's what we call it, an experience. We don't do therapy. It's an experience that mm-hmm. they really, you can see in those videos, will actually change somebody's life. We've also won a national award, a Jefferson Award for community service. So we're trying to reach out and accommodate as many of these uh, veterans as possible. So to see those videos again and to go on the website, it's saratogawarhorse.com, correct? Correct. Just want to make sure that's right. Kathy Pelham, the executive director, and Robert Nevins, the founder and the director of this program. It's a great program, and I hope we can get the word out so more people, more veterans know about it. And that's exactly the point, Richie, and we appreciate uh, your interest here. So if you or any of your listeners know of a veteran who is struggling with these issues of nightmares, inability to sleep, the post-traumatic stress, please direct them to our website so those veterans can check this out privately. And I will never say that a horse is a dumb animal again. Good. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Life-saving in every way. That's right. Well, thank you both for being on the program. Well, thank you, Richie. Thank you, Richie.